You've probably seen the videos with the title, how would I learn how to code if I had to start over? Because once a certain topic or title has success on YouTube, everyone's gonna make a video on it. This is how I would learn to code if I could start over. Learning to code is one of the best things you can do. And if I could go back in time, this is exactly how I would do it. How would I learn to code if I could go back in time? What would I do differently? Here are the 10 things I would do if I could start over again. So this is the video that I wish that I had when I was starting off and how I would learn coding if I were to do it all over again. So in this video, I'm going to tell you guys how I would learn to code if I were to start completely over from scratch. All these videos of how I would do it if I could start over, they're all subjective. And while some of the information is very valid, the truth is that all of that information has already been out there. People are just making entertaining videos in order to capture your attention and get you to watch their videos so they can get views and likes and make a little bit of money. So yeah, I've done a line or two in my life. Wait, not like that, what the f And that's perfectly fine, that's the name of the game. I thought I'd make a different video. I thought I'd do a video with a twist. I wanted to make a video titled, Would I Learn How to Code If I Could Start Over? Because I just wanted to talk about how I feel about programming right now in this current state of mind that I'm in, that I just quit my job and I don't know where I'm really headed and what I want to do and like what I'm going to do with programming and if it's still going to be as big of a part of my life as it was when I was working as a developer every day. And of course, with my last video where I let everyone know that I quit my job as a developer, why when everything is going so well in my career, would I decide to do something so crazy? I don't know. Maybe I'm stupid a lot of people started asking like what are you gonna do are you not gonna code anymore are you just a youtuber now since you gave up your developer job I don't know if it's worth learning what's the point should I still learn how to code all valid concerns all valid questions so that's what made me think of well would I learn how to code if I had to start over again the answer is yes I 100% would in fact learn how to code again. And what I would do differently, nothing, because everybody's journey is different. I would do the same exact thing I did. I would try to learn how to code self-taught and I would keep working on it until I figured it out and got hired. And that's the secret to success. The thing about learning how to code is, it brings you so many opportunities outside of just working as a programmer. Even when it comes to working as a programmer, you have so many opportunities just under the working as a programmer bubble, right? You can work as a freelancer, you can work as a contractor, you can work a full-time job, you can work here and there. You don't really need to work as a programmer in one specific way. There's many ways that you can make money as a programmer. You can build apps, you can build websites, you can build games, you can do all these different things that could potentially make you money as a programmer. So apart from just having a job as a developer, you can also make money in different ways as a developer. It also offers the ability to build your own stuff, to solve your own problems, to fix other problems that people are experiencing and contributing to open source projects and things like that, where you can contribute to tools and libraries that are used across all types of different applications that so many other people use. You can do so much with one skill that it would be foolish for me to think that I wouldn't go back and learn it again. And if I didn't know how to code right now, and I was trying to figure out a way to learn something that can bring me money and just bring me more value and make me a higher valued person when it comes to jobs, and when it comes to being an entrepreneur or building my own business, programming and learning how to code can make you better at all those things and bring you so much more value in so many areas of your life. There's no reason not to learn it. And the fact that there's just so much that you can do with it. Why wouldn't I learn how to code? Let's be honest, if I didn't learn how to code, I probably wouldn't have a successful YouTube channel because it's based around that. And just knowing that I have the security blanket of going back to a software developer job because I have this skill and because I've done it for so long and because I went out and learned it, that I could always get another job. I can always make money doing this. I know that I can always have something that will bring me in more money than just going and working a regular job. Even more than just going and working a good paying job because software developers make so much money, it's ridiculous. I literally quit $138,000 a year job because I was bored. Maybe I'm stupid. That's the type of opportunity that learning how to code has given me. And knowing that if everything went wrong and in a year from now, 
YouTube doesn't make me any money. I don't get any freelancing projects started. I don't build any products that make me money. And I'm just, I'm just at a point where I'm like, oh, hey, I'm starting to dip into my savings and things didn't work out. I can always go back to working as a developer. And that's because I set out to learn how to code. So yeah, of course, I would learn how to code if I were to start over today. And I would do it every single time, no matter what. And for all those videos out there that are trying to tell you how you should get started and people you know, telling you how they would do it if they had to do it today, just know that there's no exact way how to do it. And just because it works one way for one person doesn't mean it's gonna work for you the same way. Everybody's journey is different. You're gonna fumble around, you're gonna get lost, you're gonna have ups and downs. It's gonna be a long ride and it's gonna be a tough ride. But if you just decide to do it and you stick with it, you can learn how to code and you don't have to worry about how someone else did it because you're going to do it your way. Prescriptions are how to's. They are hacks and they are techniques and methods, various methodologies to get somewhere. When you talk about something from the standpoint of a mechanical behavior, turning on a computer, riding a bicycle, prescriptions are useful. The problem is that whenever you venture into the realm of art in any form, be it in business or sports or even in the setting of finding peace in your life or freedom or arriving at enlightenment or all of these so-called spiritual pursuits, those things cannot be prescriptionized. If you attempt to prescriptionize them, what happens is the prescription becomes the new god. You begin to try to live up to the prescription. In the beginning, you had a place to go. I want to go to X. Then you introduce an intermediary, the prescription. This is how you get to X. Then what will happen is that your mind will begin to focus upon the intermediary. In all domains, you have many people who do great things. If you take what those people did and you write a book and said that these people did X, if you follow that, you will not become them. You will not. I've found business biographies to be useless for building a great business. They're good for inspiration. I can read Steve Jobs' bio and be inspired, but I can't be Steve Jobs. And if I want to be amazing at something, then I have to find my own way there. When you're first starting something, it is actually a mechanical endeavor. You're just figuring out how to drive a car. But when you're trying to figure out how to race it around a track faster than anyone else, then all coaches and techniques and prescriptions have to fall by the wayside and you are at the edge of the art. That's correct. Now, the problem is conditioning. When there's only been one loudspeaker in a person's ear for his entire life, then that is his norm, and that is the only language that he knows. That paradigm of how-to is so embedded inside the culture. It is so deeply embedded inside the cortex of the human brain that the idea of omitting it, or the idea of even challenging its existence, is completely off the wall. It is so otherworldly and antithetical that it takes years to even get to the point where the idea of prescriptions being a impediment to whatever you seek begins to dawn. You can only give very vague principles that inspire people to head in the right direction, but I can't teach you how to make money or trade the stock market. It's like when people ask you for stock tips. No one who's any good at stock trading gives actionable investment advice in a public forum because all the details are too hard to convey. I can always tell people who ask for stock tips, they're not really serious about investing. People who ask for book recommendations aren't really serious about reading. People who ask, what business should I build? Aren't really serious about entrepreneurship. People who say, what career path should I take? They're not really serious about their career. When someone's asking for a how-to in anything, they aren't actually that serious about it. If they were truly serious about it, they would figure it out. But then that leaves the paradoxical question, well, how do I figure it out? Take the person who, quote, made it and became world-class in whatever he did. If he went back and retraced his steps and did everything again the same way, but this time he did it by mimicking himself, he would fail. Even he wouldn't be able to do it. What has to be understood is that where greatness comes from, it's a very murky affair. 
it is nonlinear, it is unpredictable. Perhaps nature and the universe set it up this way that you have to jump in. And once you jump in the soup and you're being bombarded through all sides and you live in confusion and you have no idea which way is up, if the obsession is there, then what happens is through some messy process, you find a way. You see light at the end of the tunnel. You forge a path through the jungle. That was not done according to a how. You were flailing the entire time. So there was no how to flail. When you come out through the tunnel and someone asks you how you did it, you have no idea. The thing that's almost laughable is when you ask a great athlete, can you show me how you did that? They won't come on and say, I have no idea. They will provide you with some semblance of an answer, which is a non-answer. And what they will do is, because there's a gun pointed to their head and their back's against a wall, they will create the highlights. When the human being who watches that follows the highlights, he misses. And the reason that he misses is because it's all the small things. I can't watch Roger Federer play tennis and swing the racket the same way, nor will any description from him on how to swing the racket get me to swing it the right way. Then we go to intellectual efforts. We start asking Warren Buffett why he invests in a company. And there he can try and create a mental construct as to how he thinks and how he invests in the company. But there are just as many details to Warren Buffett's activities when he decides what to invest in and how he lives his life and how he thinks as there are to Roger Federer's body running around a tennis court hitting a ball. The details are not transmissible. They're not copyable. You can be inspired to try it yourself, but without that sincerity, that obsession, you won't get there. Not only are the details not transmissible, the details are not even knowable. Ah, uh, so Warren and Roger don't even know it themselves. Absolutely not. No great artist knows. The things that you do greatest are the things that you know not how you do them. I would argue that you're not even there when you do them. You're not consciously thinking about it. With all that said, I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, and I'll see you next time.